All right, now we're gonna look at our piston and rings for our L28 build. And unfortunately for this project, uh, in terms of the pistons, we could really mostly just look at them because we can't afford to do anything else. Now the, the short block that I purchased from Craigslist, it came with the dished piston, which I understand is the, the more common of the designs uh, for lower compression. I imagine the idea was lower emissions at the time, but dished pistons. Now online, I was able to find a set of used flat top piston and rods. Um, I think from a later model, uh, 280ZX maybe. Um, and hopefully we're gonna try to make these work. And the reason of course is with the flat top, we will get a little more compression and therefore a little more horsepower out of our engine. Now I realize that uh, between this dish piston and the flat top, the chances are they have a slightly different weight. Um, they're both cast pistons, uh, very similar in design on the bottom side. I'm kind of hoping they're really close in weight um, because we, we really don't have the budget to, uh, do a, to balance the rotating assembly. The only thing we're gonna do with these are, of course, order new rings. Now, as far as the rods go, um, again, this is the first time I've uh, taken apart an L28. I was actually really surprised by the, the uh, quality of these rods. These are, of course, forged. And if you look closely around the, uh, where the head of the rod bolt is, and of course, the rod cap. Look at all that, that webbing back here. Again, I'm comparing this to uh, their standard OEM uh, small block Ford, small block Chevy rods. And these rods just seem much more substantial. And they're, you know, they're gonna work great for this project. Now, one thing we are definitely changing are the rod bolts. Um, you typically wanna do this anyway. Uh, they do fatigue over our use. And of course, if you remember, uh, the engine, when we first took it apart, uh, it had thrown a rod right through the side of the block because of this, the rod bolt failed and just snapped right in half. So we're gonna replace these older rod bolts with ARP racing bolts, um, and then of course standard bearings. And that's pretty much uh, gonna be it for, for any change. I mean, in the books, they of course go into polishing the beams, working this area right in here. Um, but all of that, uh, it's probably not necessary for our project. Um, and also I don't wanna change the weights of anything, you know, too radically. And uh, plus I'm just kind of short on time. So for this project, we, we won't be doing that work. Now, if we're gonna spend more time with the rods, one area I would focus on is right here. This sharp corner, uh, with the machine surface, you know, that's machined out for the head of the rod bolt. Now on the cap side, this surface, this corner right here, really isn't that bad. Um, it may be a little hard to see on the video, but it's actually sort of a, it's not a sharp corner, it kind of rounds up, it's like a curved corner. Even though this area is machined flat, uh, the intersection is still on a curve, it's really not that bad. Now we could, you know, round it over with a file or something like that, but it's not too bad. So to work on this, we would simply take off the rod bolts, and get our die grinder and start working on these corners. All right, I've taken off the rod bolt and the rod cap. And this corner right here is what I just want to round over. Um, I do not want to gouge or take away material from this surface because that's the bearing surface of the rod bolt. And I don't want to, you know, dig a trowel in here either. The only thing I want to do is just break this sharp corner and that's just that's just about it, you know. Again, without you know doing a ton of work to these rods. All right. Now I know this is hard to see on the video, but you know my goal was just right here to take away that sharp edge, that sharp corner over here and here by using a die grinder and uh, actually relying on a sanding roll a bit. Again, we want to uh, take off the minimum amount of metal possible. Now with the rod cap, I think for this corner here, we may be able to simply use a sanding roll just to uh, break that edge.
that's gonna be it. Now, one thing we have to check before we proceed, of course, is to double check the dimensions of the piston. Now, these again, these are these are cast pistons from the factory, and we when we measure them, typically with a cast piston, here's the pin. We will go 90 degrees from the pin at the bottom of the skirt. So I guess that's the uh, that's a typical location for measuring cast pistons. If you have aftermarket pistons, the uh, the build sheet will actually tell you where to measure the piston for dimensions. But for these factory pistons, I uh, understand it's going to be at the bottom of the skirt. And the main thing that we're going to check for here, of course, is that these are the standard pistons. Uh, they're not collapsed, and they're not the overboard pistons. So using a micrometer. Again, at the bottom of the skirt, we're going to, or right towards the bottom of the skirt, we're going to take our measurement. And we are at, oh, okay, we are at 3.385. That worked out. That worked out. No, it's actually 3.386. Um, okay, that's our measurement. And going to our book, we see we. We are supposed to be at 3.386, so looks like we have a stock dimension flat top piston that we're going to use for this project.